Replit has released an agent app that not only can code your ideas from a prompt, but can do it from your phone. Does this mean the end of software development as we know it, or a grand age of flourishing? Let's dig in. Welcome back to the AI Daily Brief. One of the most profound and important questions lurking underneath the advent of artificial intelligence is what it's likely to do to human labor. This is, of course, never far away from the discussion. AI increasingly knows more than almost anyone at any given field, and agents are actually finally coming online, able to take on some amount of tasks independently. And more than anything that exists today, the trajectory is just incredibly clear. So what happens in a world where the cost of intelligence falls to zero? Will it involve the chaotic destruction of the economy and the replacement of all human labor with robot brains? Or is there another possibility? For those looking for evidence, an interesting place to start is in the realm of software development. One of the great ironies of software engineering and AI is that these tools that this particular group have built seem like they might be most in line to displace that group. The product that launched the latest round of discussion is Replit's new phone app. If you're not familiar with Replit, they're a new kind of coding assistant aimed at non-developers. At least that's what they've become more recently. The idea is to empower normal people to create apps and websites with a single prompt. And the product has now gotten to the point where embedded agents actually improve the user's prompt, create the code, debug, and test, and finally deliver a finished app within about 10 minutes. This week, they launched a version of this for phones. Balaji Srinivasan writes, Okay, this finally solves coding on the go. You have the idea, you tap out the tweet length description into Replit, You hit improve prompt, and then the AI agents start grinding away to make it. Check back on a desktop a while later, and you have a V1 prototype. The service at this stage is a little limited. Most of the examples are very simple, and you're more likely to have success building an exercise tracker or a basic game than a more complex fully featured app. But this is still absolutely a step change in accessibility for programming. Non-developers can now have a working prototype without knowing the first thing about coding. It's fast, cheap, and good enough to be very useful. And importantly, Replit is far from the only company tackling this particular space. John Rush, in fact, pointed to 24 AI coding agents and IDEs. Cursor, SoftGen, Windsurf, Rapify, Copilot, Lovable, Bolt, V0, Replit, MarsX, Claude, Amazon Q, Pair, Devon, GitHub, Spark, IDX, WebDraw, Tempo, Klein, Continue, DataButton, Base44, Kodo, and Ader. And whichever tool you pick, it seems pretty clear that these no- and low-code apps are starting to insert themselves earlier and earlier in the software design process. Paul Graham, the founder of Y Combinator, recently said that a CEO of a moderately big tech company had replaced Figma with Replit as their design tool, commenting, Replit is so good at generating apps that they just go straight to prototype now. Greg Eisenberg had a very similar example. He writes, I had to laugh at our product meeting last week. While we were discussing ideas for a new startup, one of my partners was quietly building it on V0, Bolt, Replit, etc. right in front of us in real time. By the time we finished describing features of What If, he had a working prototype on screen. Suddenly we weren't having another product meeting we were debugging. No more imagine if we had conversations. Instead, it's look what happens when we. The gap between imagination and reality shrinks to minutes. Meetings become workshops, ideas become experiments, decisions become data-driven. What's more, these services are getting major traction across the software industry. Swix posted, Today I learned that Cursor is the fastest-growing SaaS in the history of SaaS. One to $100 million in 12 months with a wide and small customer base. And as you might expect, this has led to a million X threads from the X thread boys along the theme of this one from Deval Maquana that writes, RIP web developers, in 90 seconds, AI can generate a fully functioning website. Anson Zeal writes, I think Replit just wiped out a jackload of developers. Mind-blowing. Edward Fraser, a YC alum, even made an app with Replit to find out how long it would take for him to be replaced by Replit. After inserting a picture of his LinkedIn profile, the app said he would be fully replaced by 2028. Vekri writes, If anyone can build an app from their phone, what's our edge as founders? And this brings us to this question nominally about software developers, but really about the world more broadly, of what happens when the cost of intelligence and the skills associated with it crash to near zero. I have long said on this show that in a world where code is one-tenth as costly and difficult to create, we don't have one-tenth of the developers, we have 10 times the amount of code. Indeed, my base case for all of artificial intelligence is that we will just live in a world of more, more software, more content, more everything. This will, I think, inevitably, change what people spend their time doing. Coursera founder Andrew Ng writes, writing software, especially prototypes, is becoming cheaper. This will lead to increased demand for people who can decide what to build. Basically, he's talking about the rise of product managers. In their recent request for startups, Y Combinator wrote, will agents kill the job of software developer? No, we'll need more human software engineers in the future because software is going to run almost everything. These humans won't write much code directly. Instead, they'll manage teams of agents that build software for them. What's happening then is that the barriers to entry for development are being structurally lowered. 
And while I do believe that this is going to be the most dramatic example that we've ever seen, we have seen this happen over and over again in software engineering. In the late 70s, the release of the Apple II led to an explosion in hobbyist coders creating games in their bedrooms. As 3D engines became cheaper in the mid-2000s, we saw a proliferation of indie games. Mobile apps have become easier and easier to create over the years, and the numbers keep climbing. And this is to say nothing of the proliferation of user-generated content, as the cost of that type of production came down as well. In short, none of the tools that previously made developing software easier to create was met by reduced demand for developers. They simply caused more software to be published and consumed. This, to me, feels like the apotheosis of that trend. Will Preble writes, Cannot overstate how awesome Replit is. Idea to MVP in minutes or hours for virtually nothing. We are entering a new era of software development that is accessible to anyone with a phone and an idea. In other words, to use the framing that's been everyone's favorite for the last week or so, although in a very different context, we are in the midst of a Javon's paradox for intelligence. Javon's paradox is the idea that when technology makes something more efficient, like using less fuel or energy, it can actually lead to more overall consumption, not less. For example, if new technology makes cars more fuel efficient, driving becomes cheaper. Instead of using less fuel overall, people might drive more, leading to an increase in total fuel consumption. The paradox shows that efficiency improvements don't always lead to conservation. In many cases, they encourage even more use of the resource. And that, I think, fairly perfectly describes what happens when we enter an age of intelligence that's too cheap to meter. And I will point out that when it comes to coding specifically, the impact will not be limited to more people doing what software developers do now. It's going to be regular people who aren't software developers doing totally new things with software that wouldn't have been done before. When was the last time you saw a web application or a mobile app as the centerpiece of a major marketing campaign? Pretty rarely, right? Strong bet that as creating code becomes available in the marketer's toolkit, it becomes every bit as regular a choice as a YouTube video or a blog post. So of all the barriers to entry creator, does this mean that all the developers and entrepreneurs have no future? First of all, it's important not to underestimate just how long change takes in practice. Mike at Niche Down on Twitter writes, AI coding tools like Cursor and Replit will make the world awash with software products, but I don't think it happens overnight. Most people are not persistent, any roadblocks at all, and they quit. Honestly, just having to set up a database and get API keys is a challenge for some, even though it's clicking and copy-paste. These tools will improve, but right now it takes a lot of patience and troubleshooting to get things working, and the last mile of getting a great code output on text alone is a hard challenge to solve. Even beyond that, being able to create something is not the same as being able to create something great. If it was, we'd have a lot more very successful YouTube channels, rather than just a tiny, tiny fraction of content creators out there being able to build a big audience from it. And for that person who was asking what advantage startup founders have, this gets back to that classic trope of everyone having a friend who said, oh, I had that idea first. If only I had done it, I'd be a billionaire. In 2018, Sam Altman was talking at Y Combinator, and he pointed out that startup founders, the good ones, don't just have an idea. They never stop having ideas. He said, you can give a founder an idea and they can start a company. The problem is they need to come up with new ideas for the company basically every week. You have to come up with crazy new ideas and big changes all the time. We are at the very, very dawn of understanding what work and creation look like in the future. The only thing that is clear right now is that more people are going to have a totally expanded capacity to take the things that are in their brain and make them real in the real world. It's very, very hard for me to see that as anything but just incredible potential. That's going to do it for today's AI Daily Brief. Appreciate you listening or watching as always. And until next time, peace.